Hey everybody, tonight we're going to do another work from start to finish. Um, this one's going to be a bit of paleo art, which means it's going to have a dinosaur. So we're going to start with view and create a nice uh, jungle, deep forest type uh, scene. And then use uh, Poser to uh, pose a, al we'll do an Allosaurus. And um, put, that in the, uh, put that in our forest scene. And then we'll use GIMP to do some post-production. And then after that, I'll show you how to upload it to Fine Art America and have it for sale within uh, a few minutes of having it done. So uh, let's get to it. OK, so here we are in view. And what we're going to do is create a sort of a dense jungle forest type scene. And the first thing I'm going to do is just create a landscape for our foreground. So I click up here to get a, uh, a terrain, and I kind of just move it in front of the camera. And I don't need it to be as rugged as they start out at, so I'm going to flatten it out. Something about like that. And I'm going to tilt it away from the camera so we don't see this back edge right here. All right, and we'll give it a, uh, right now it's just got a white texture. We'll give it something a little bit more ground-like. Dry clay is fine. Uh, it'll be covered in plants later, so you won't see too much of it, but some of it might peek, peek through. Let's actually darken it to look more like uh, forest soil. Give it sort of a rich look to it. Okay. And now I'm going to add a tree. Something to kind of frame the foreground. Um, I like to use uh, not Montezuma cypress. Old juniper has always been a pretty good tree for me, so I'll use that. And we'll just make it really big and kind of put it up front here. Let's see how it looks in our preview window. That looks pretty good. Um, it's a little bit too tight so I'm going to loosen it up here so if I double click on the uh, the tree over here in the uh, object list I get the uh, tree editor and here I can lengthen everything now, I could select individual subsets parts of the trunk parts of the limbs and such but I'm just going to do it all at once I'm going to just increase the length and then increase the length of the branches actually I don't want to do that I'm going to decrease that a little bit okay so we have like I said this tree trunk just in the foreground um, it's just sort of something to anchor our uh, our foreground terrain. So I'm going to jump over to the terrain here. And we'll put some plants on it. And to do that, you just uh, add an ecosystem. And one of the things I like to do with the ecosystem, uh, just to save memory on my computer, is to set this display option to none. This will uh, make it so it'll just show anything. Any stuff it puts on here is just a bunch of dots. And it makes it a little quicker to display. You won't drag your computer down as much. So we'll add a plant. And uh, under grasses here, you have um, this kind of fern-like thing. They call it a small grass field plant three, but it makes a good fern. And I'm set scale to one and hit populate. And to run a quick preview, and that looks a bit on the small side, so we'll take that up to two. And even larger than that, we'll go up to four. Okay, now it looks like there's some stuff on the forest floor around this tree. I'm going to make it a little bit denser. Set up to about 65. And I like to gray and yellow the color a little bit. I think it's a little bit too deep green. There we go. Now let's do a quick preview of that. Now if you want to uh, preview the scene in a slightly larger, you can also, you can always take, select your camera view here and hit this button and that'll take it up to the full screen size and then you can run a preview render. And that looks pretty good there. I think I want to make the ferns a little bit smaller but I also want to move them down lower in the frame. Now what I can always do is just move the camera up. Uh, nope, don't want that. I want the terrain. Let's back the size of those ferns off to three. All right. 
So that's good. Now we kind of have a, a workspace here. It's been framed on two sides by the uh, the ground and the tree up here. So we'll have some sort of animal coming out of the jungle here. But let's uh, let's build the rest of the forest. And that's not really all that hard to do. We'll um, create another terrain. Uh, go back into four view mode. We're going to make this one a bit bigger because we need to cover a lot more ground. And also flatten it back out. Now we're just going to copy the uh, the terrain, uh, the uh, the textures and the ecosystem. All you have to do is go back to your first terrain, right click here and hit copy material. Go down to terrain 2 and paste that material. And then it's going to ask if you want to populate the ecosystem, and we do. And now we have a forest floor going back into the distance. Now we also need some trees for that, so what I'm going to do is create another ecosystem. Click on the dry clay again and hit ecosystem. And for this one, we'll just add some more of those junipers. And I need to make them a lot bigger. Bigger than that. Okay, now it looks like it's a little too distant. Um, let's move it a little closer. That's terrain too. I want to be too careful not to collide with the foreground. And kind of find a, a set of trees you like, moving it left and right. Okay, that's looking pretty good there. Let's close this forest in, though, because it's, we still got a lot of sky showing through, and I don't want any showing through. I want it to feel closed in. So I'm just going to throw a cube down. And I'm going to make it very big. doesn't need to be tall, just wide. And I don't want it to be visible, so you see I'm sinking it behind the horizon line here. Because we don't really care about this material, but we do need to create another uh, another ecosystem. And the same thing, we're just going to add the same tree. Yeah, but we're going to jack the density way up so that it covers the sky, it obscures the sky. Okay. So it's a little bit too hazy here, so let's fix the atmosphere some. To do that, you just go here, and you see I have the uh, aerial perspective set up to 10. Let's set it down to 2. And have a look over here. Uh, there we go. Now we're looking like a much more inside a forest. Um, let's go up just a little bit higher. There, so there is some sense of distance there. Now I'm still seeing some uh, some sky through here, so let's make this even larger. <clears throat> Keep the same density, but uh, because we give it more distance, more trees will appear. All right, now I'm going to change the atmosphere just a bit. Um, going to make the uh, haze a bit more of a greenish gray. More, even more than that. Let's go. A little bit more saturated. We want it to look like you know the the forest is kind of glowing green. And then for the fog, we'll actually just drop it to black. See how that looks. All right, well that makes it look a, a good deal more forest-like. Um, so one more thing I'm going to do real quick is we're going to throw some uh, sunlight into this. Let's do that. I am going to add a spotlight. I want it to be pretty close to where the camera's at. So right up here on our original uh, terrain. Make sure we're crossing the uh, the view plane of, or the the, uh, the view field of the camera. And we want to make it volumetric and show smoke or dust in the light beam. So now let's see if it appears. Okay, now it's a bit too strong. First off, let's change the spread. This is how wide the light is. 
I'll zoom in on that so you can see the difference. So if I set this down to, let's say, 10, you see how this got a lot thinner here, the beam. So let's have a quick preview of that. There we go. And now we thinned it out so much that it almost completely disappeared. So, let's move this closer to the camera. And now we're back in, in the camera. We're, we're back. Let's move this back behind that tree. Oops, disappeared again. Hey, sometimes you gotta play with this just to get it just right. Okay, so I'm gonna make the light more yellow. It's a little too strong, and it's not broken up enough, so let's break that up. And one way you can do that is just to create a uh, a shape. We'll just do a cube, and we'll stretch it out. We don't want it to be too big, but we're just going to stick that in the light here. And hopefully it'll create a shadow cutting through. And you see how now we've, cut, we've created a shadow cutting through the light. It's a bit too big, but it definitely gives you that more of a sunbeam feel to it. So let's make that just not quite so big. Now let's see how that looks. Okay, we got one there and let's do another. Just hold down the alt key and drag and you'll duplicate that object. Did I? Yeah I did. Just kind of hiding there. A little too low. Okay, so now we got you know a couple of sunbeams cutting through. I think I want to make this one a little bit smaller so they're not so both the cuts aren't so so similar. There we go. All right, so let's have a quick preview render. All right, so I'm going to save this off, and you do that by clicking the little disk shape icon up here, and we'll just. Uh, Save it to the desktop for now. Okay, now that that's saved, I'm going to go over into Poser and we'll pick out something to be a character in this scene. Okay, so here I've loaded Poser. Um, we're not going to use this guy, so just tap on him, hit Delete, and OK. We'll get rid of him. And I'm going to go to my library here and pick out uh, an off-the-shelf dinosaur. I like these dinosaurs by Dino Raul, so we'll pick the Allosaurus. Nice thing about the Allosaurus is I don't have to worry about adding feathers. Alright. We're not going to do a whole lot because most of him will be obscured by the uh, the trees and the, the plants. We'll just use the, uh, I'm using the rotate tool here and I'm just giving a few things a twist here and there. make those arms look like he's got them. And this here is what's called a morph where it sort of moves a whole bunch of things at once. And that's in this case it was moving those fingers. So let's uh, get these legs in position here. Oops, moved his leg a little too much. Like I said, we're not going to do too much because he's mostly going to kind of creeping out of the forest at us. Give that tail a little bit more of a curve. I think I want to drop the front of his body a lot more. Let's do this. Oh, there we go. That's a good position. We'll keep that. 
you know, that's a, except maybe we'll turn his head a little bit more so we see him a bit more in profile. All right, so that's a pretty good pose here. Now we'll just save him off, file, save as, and we'll go up to our desktop where we saved our last scene. Desktop, and I'll just call it Allosaurus. And then we're done in pose, or we can just close it up. Now we're going to go back into view here, into our scene. And it's a little confusing to look at this right now, so what I'm going to do is create some layers. To do that, you click on this little thing right here. And you can start hiding some of the stuff you don't really need to worry about while you're doing this part of the part of the scene you're working on. So I just move all this stuff into this layer and I click this little eye here and this will start hiding stuff. One more thing I want to hide. Oh, no, there it goes. That's right, I still had it selected. So now I just see this for the foreground stuff I was working on. And now we're going to open the Allosaurus. So I click here to load an object. And I clicked on this little arrow to go to the, uh, the file system. Go all the way up to the desktop. Allosaurus PZ3. You can uh, tie together your poser and view, which is one of the things I like about using the two together. And view can easily import the view files. So I click OK. Um, for some reason, whenever I try to import a poser file, I get this question. I always just say no. And we're not going to do the entire animation. We just want that first scene, that, that first frame, which is going to be frame zero. And we'll drag him down into the scene, make him a lot bigger. Kind of give him a nice rotation so that he fits just right. And let's see how that looks in the preview window. Now that looks pretty cool, except he's not quite close enough to the camera. So let's put him up here. Raise him up just a bit so he's not. It's coming over that hill, not part of it. Maybe have him a little too close to the camera. Have him coming up the hill. All right, now let's see how that looks on a uh, preview render. Oh, that's what I was looking for. All right, so let's render that. Now this guy looks pretty cool. Um, the only problem I have is that his skin is a bit too reflective, which is why you get these this bright white highlights here. So let's just double click here and go into highlights and reduce that to nothing. And this is um, the dinosaur is actually made up of eight textures, but the skin happens to be the first of those, so that's the one I reduced to uh, no highlights. And the other thing is he's a bit dark on this side over here, so I'm going to add just a fill light into this. To do that, I can uh, click and hold the left button here, and I get to select from some lights. And I'm going to just pick this directional light, and I'm going to move it to the opposite side of the dinosaur and sort of point it inward a little bit. And we'll give it kind of a darker color because this is just the shadows, sort of the light that's bouncing off of everything is coming back to hit him. That's perhaps a little bit too dark. Out there sort of a, a greenish grayish light make it pretty soft there and that'll give that shadow side some depth so now let's have a look at it oh I forgot to do something and we'll stop that turn off the shadows for our fill light now let's do that okay so our we're not blasting out this side with highlights anymore uh, we still got a couple of highlights on his claws that maybe make him look a little too shiny, so we'll go in and find that texture and fix that. Let's just stop the render here. We'll pick our Allosaurus up again, find his claws. You can see here, actually, it indicates how much highlight there is. So let's turn that off. And that looks pretty cool. So let's... um set that up to do a final render. I'm going to click and hold here on this camera, go to final. Now you can go to these higher settings, but we're going to render large enough to where it won't really matter. Um, 
you're going to render to screen or if you want you can render off screen just straight to a file I'm going to set it up pretty high we'll give it 5200 by 3467 that's going to make it large enough to do some pretty large prints off of this if somebody orders a hard copy so with that we'll go to render and we'll come back in a few days okay so the render finished um, this is just an example I actually had it finish a few days ago and haven't looked at it but uh, just to show you what you do once it finishes uh, you get this screen here where you can make some adjustments but I never bother with it now here you want to do two things to save your image the first is you click on this thing here that looks like a rainbow and then uh, click the uh, save button and this this is because I just rendered it in preview mode for an example but uh, you normally wouldn't see this um, and then you save it to a file in this case it'd be a deep forest BMP but you also want to click on this Z right here and this is going to give you the depth map which is a uh, things darker are closer to the camera things lighter are further away and this is something you can use in post-production to uh, to add some effects so we're gonna save that too. you click the save and you'd save it as deep forest Z in this case uh, but I'm not gonna do that because I've already saved it and uh, we're done with view all right so here I have our uh, our image loaded um, as well as the uh, the depth map and we're gonna go to the depth map first because I want to isolate the foreground and in order to do that I use this uh, depth map and I'm gonna go to colors and threshold and what this does is it takes that grayscale and makes it either black or white depending on at what point what level of grayness it is so that's what's going to eliminate our distance and here we have the the background gone and now the midground gone and that leaves us with just the foreground so click OK there and we we're gonna copy everything and go over here to our main image and paste and then we're gonna solidify this layer by clicking this little thing here and that turns that into a layer and we're gonna select by color select the black and delete that layer and that keeps our selection around what what the, are the elements of the foreground and for this we just uh, copy copy and paste and then that creates a floating layer a floating selection we want to turn that into a layer we just click this here so now we have the background separated from the foreground so I can create a layer in between if I want and move it down with that downward arrow here that puts this new layer in between and we'll select a uh, using this dropper tool I'm going to select about the lightest color I can find in the background which is right about here and that gives me sort of a yellowish color right here go back to that new layer we created I'm going to click on the uh, airbrush tool here now what I have here are uh, three uh, smoke brushes but they work good for fog these are third-party brushes um, and I'll have links for them in the show notes but you can get them for free so now I've set my brush size up pretty high uh, a thousand so you do like that like that so now I can kind of click here and create some depth by uh, obscuring the background a little bit and I can change the size of this brush maybe let's go down to about half that down to about 900 pick a different one especially along the ground really make this like kind of a misty forest alright so now you can if you want to see what kind of difference that made you can always just hide that new layer you see it sort of uh, makes our foreground stand out a bit more let's do a little bit more right there along his top side so this is just like I said just to make the uh, the foreground kind of jump out a bit more so it doesn't recede into it as much alright um, now let's go up to the foreground here and let's even out our color value so because most of his body is in shadow here so let's make it a little bit brighter colors uh, levels and you can just move these around so we'll make this the darker is a little bit darker and the midtones a bit brighter and that helps just a little bit to uh, to bring out the shadowy side of him 
Okay. Um, I'm going to flatten the layer, or uh, flatten all the layers, and just do a little bit more color adjustment. I think there's a little bit too much yellow in here, not enough red. So we'll go into the highlights and just add some red in. And maybe the midtones as well. Oh, there we go. That really makes a difference. Perhaps a little too much. Let's take the ones back out of the highlights. And you can check out the preview here. It's just a subtle difference, but it kind of yeah, going a little bit more orange. Yeah, yellow is the yellow is just a bit too strong for me. And um, let's see what happens if we add some blue and green in the shadows. Ah, I don't like that, so we'll not do that. All right. Okay, with that, I think we'll call this one finished. Um, let's actually add my signature real quick. Uh, select all. It's really useful just to have a uh, signature saved as a file. You can always just copy and paste it in. Save you some time. Kind of hard to write your name with a mouse. Scale. And we'll move this down to here where it's out of the way. All right, and then we'll save this off. So we'll export as, and we'll call this, uh, let's give it a better name for the file name. Allosaurus in a forest.jpg. Now you want to figure out what the file size is going to be. Um, since I'm going to upload this to a print-on-demand site that has a limit of 25 megabytes, I want to make sure that I get the highest quality I can, but I still stay under that limit. And so 28.3 is just a little bit too big. I bet you if I drop down to 99, though, that'll be enough. And the quality drop from uh, 100 to 99 is unnoticeable to a person. So here, 23.9, we're under that limit. So we'll save that off. All right, so here we are at Fine Art America, and I'm going to log into my artist account. And I'm going to go to my profile and the images of my profile and upload an image. Choose a file, and i got to find that uh, file on the desktop. Here it is, Allosaurus in a Forest, and upload the image. And here we go. Um, we'll give this the title, Allosaurus in a Forest. And generally for the artwork title, you don't want to be too poetic because what you want is something that's going to, uh, that people will search for in a search engine. So if somebody wants a picture of an Allosaurus, they're not going to look for something like, uh, you know, danger, dangerous forest beast or something like that. They're going to want to look for an Allosaurus. So they'll type in a keyword, Allosaurus. So keep in mind that your words here are very important. They need to be keywords that somebody's going to search for. Now you do have another section for keywords down here, and you want to do kind of the same thing. Allosaurus, dinosaur, or dinosaur. Um, this brings up a point. You don't need to do plural stuff. Dinosaur will cover dinosaur and dinosaurs plural. Now these keywords are for the internal search engine to find Art America. Um, I'm just going to do a couple here for now. Uh, always remember to put your own name in the uh, keywords. Now the description here though is where you want to have your uh, a description that's rich in keywords for Google sake. So you know, uh, fearsome spelling, fearsome Allosaurus stalks the Jurassic era jungle. Um, I'm not going to do a long one now, but do keep in mind, you want to make this keyword rich so that uh, it attracts Google searches. And then, um, let's see, what else do we have here? Display options. Never do a watermark. Uh, that actually drives away buyers. So leave watermarks off. Uh, in case you're doing something that's not safe for work, you could check here. You could put no here. Um, galleries, these are uh, sub-galleries that I've created in my uh, main gallery to just organize my images. I recommend you do that uh, so that when somebody lands on one of your artworks and they see the gallery, they'll see if, say, somebody was looking for an Allosaurus but they didn't like that particular image, 
they would be in my paleo art gallery, which is where we'll put this, and they'll see perhaps other images I've done of allosauruses. Um, groups are uh, something you have on the site. You can join. Uh, they're groups of other artists. I think I have one for dinosaurs here, so we'll enter that in the dinosaurs one. Uh, we'll leave it out for now, actually, because I'm going to come back later and I'll and do a better description. Um, we don't have an original. This being that this is digital art, so this one, this section, you can ignore. Okay, now here's what I like about. Uh, Fine Art America so much is I can specify my markup on every size and now I've already specified a set of defaults that it entered. Um, so this is really nice because most print-on-demand sites make you do a percentage. Uh, it's much nicer to be able to do just a whole dollar value and kind of know what I'm going to get if somebody buys a 60 by 40. Now you'll see that I'm locked out of this this one size here though because the image wasn't large enough to uh, to accommodate that. And then you have a few other things, greeting cards, throw pillows, uh, phone cases. We'll just leave those all the way they are here. Um, there's also, if you'd like, you can uh, offer your images for licensing. So if somebody wants to use them as a book cover or something like that. So I like to have a few of those specified. And here, if you want, you can uh, post it. This will not only put it up on your gallery, but it'll put it on your Facebook page or your fan page. Uh, you'll tweet it out. Um, I actually don't do it this way because I don't like the uh, format that uh, Fine Art America uses. And also, um, I don't necessarily want to post those at this time. I want to post them at a time that's more uh, convenient or at where I know my buyers are going to be watching. So maybe I'll do it at 8 p.m. this evening instead on Facebook and Twitter. And then we'll submit. So anyway... Um, if so, this is up and ready to go. I mean, if anybody visits my uh, page here, I can send them this link if I want to drive drive people to this site or to this uh, page. They can actually order prints directly from here, and I'll get a notification, and a couple of months later, I'll actually receive the payment. So it's great. I mean, this we've gone from start to finish creating a picture and having it up and ready for sale. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more or read some of my articles or even check out some of my art, you can find me on my blog at www.introvertartist.com and here I post articles on how to make art, how to sell it online, tools that you can use. Uh, I have links to my gallery as well as a, you can subscribe to my newsletter here and my newsletter is something I send out every Wednesday with news on my latest uh, artworks, articles, videos, promotions, discounts, and I even throw in a few a free computer wallpaper every week. So thanks everybody and good night.